Good morning, your family here at United Baptist Church welcomes you to our worship service this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in or clicking on and being a part of our service. Oh my goodness. Uh, if you're listening on the radio, thank you uh, for tuning in or keeping it tuned in to our service this morning. And I never want to forget to thank those folks down at the radio station for their diligent work in bringing you these broadcasts. Oh my goodness. And maybe you are watching on our website, ubctopson.org, and you're clicked on the sermon uh, icon there and you're joining us now. Thank you for going through those steps and making that choice to come and be with us. And uh, Special thanks to Linda and Andy and all the folks here at uh, United Baptist for their diligent work in making sure that these broadcasts, that these uh, messages make it to you. Ah, sometimes it is work that never gets recognized until it's missing. Ah, isn't that right? Oh my goodness. But we do want to recognize all that have a part in it. It truly takes a village to make these things happen. Our joke for the day comes to us. It's a, it's a short one today, so uh, get ready to groan early. Yes. <laughs> Where do mice park their boats? Where do mice park their boats? Well, at the Hickory Dickory Dock. Of course. <laughs> okay, now you can groan. There we go. <laughs> oh, why am I still here? Was Gaynell's question to me. Gaynell was 93 years old. She was in a nursing home and had been there for 10 years or so at this point. She was in a wheelchair couldn't do a lot for herself. Her mind was still sharp as a tack, but a series of stroke had left uh, and had taken most of her physical abilities away. The nursing home that Gaynell was in was right next door to the church. We were connected by just a parking lot. Gaynell was one of the most faithful in church attendance than all of the other folks even the healthy ones. <laughs> ah, in her earlier years, Gaynell had been a pillar at that church, teaching Sunday school, active in the women's groups, and even held several of the church offices. Her husband had passed away 20 some odd years earlier, and in her heart, she really longed to be and to see her husband. She wanted to be with the folks from her past. She wanted not to be in pain any longer and she wanted to go to heaven in her eyes she wasn't the ball of fire of her past and was now questioning her very worth and didn't see any attributes and so she was asking god through me why why am i still here why was she still alive? What good was she just sitting in a wheelchair there at the nursing home? Oh my, as we talked that day, and as I tried to reassure her in all of our visits after that one, I tried to explain that her role was in fact not the same as it had been in the past. Due to the fact that she was still alive, we believe that God still had a role for her and it, it, that role had changed. Now she is a witness to all of the other patients there at the nursing home. She is also now a witness to the staff and the administration there. She's also a witness to the visitors that came into that building, whether they were there to see her or anyone else. I shared with her how she was still a witness there at church even. Her attendance was inspiring to me as 
we knew the effort that it took for her to get up and get around and be at the church. And now she was a principal prayer warrior. With her schedule, there were great times that she could be in prayer for her family, her church, her neighbors, her country. She was available 24 seven to pray for anything and anyone. Gaynell had fallen into the trap of primarily looking inward, primarily looking at herself. And whether it is Gaynell at 93 years old or what we might consider to be a perfectly healthy young person, when we look at ourselves, it is too easy, isn't it, to get depressed. When we're looking at ourselves, we can easily get depressed. When our focus is on ourselves, we notice all of the flaws, the places that we don't measure up, oh, all of those things we recognize. Some of those measurements that we compare ourselves to, <laughs> we accept through the media, right? Through the merchandisers that, that are out there, not looking for our best interest. Oh no, they're looking for their best interest. Some of those measurements that we try to put ourselves up against are based on what we see in other people. People that we, in our minds at least, would label to be successful. And then there are those measurements that we put upon ourselves based on our own past. Those things that we used to be able to do, right? But we cannot do them anymore for one reason or another. And it all affects the aspects of each of our lives. Not just the physical, not just the emotional, not just the mental, not just the spiritual, but each and every aspect it has a, a way of making us think in different ways. Now don't hear what I'm not saying, all right? Taking care of ourselves is always a good idea. Being being watchful and looking out for those opportunities to take care of ourselves is always a good idea. Eating healthy and exercise, learning new things and trying to be better, they are all great things to do. But we must remember that we need to keep them in perspective. Yes, I want to be healthy. <laughs> but there are only a few that will ever be Mr. Universe. All right, if I try to compare myself to that, I will always fall short, all right? <laughs> I do not need to be a Jim Ryan. Another look at how old I am, okay? And run a four minute mile, all right? I just don't need to do that. I don't need to have the biggest house, the fanciest car, or the fastest lawnmower in town. Oh, and by the way, I, I heard something the other day is <laughs> when it came to fast lawnmowers, uh, it, it, the little saying went like this, it's not how fast you mow, it's how well you mow fast. <laughs> but I don't even feel the need to be as spiritual as I think someone else may be say a Franklin Graham or, or somebody along those lines, all right? Whatever that level is, whatever I have envisioned in my own mind that that level is, yes, I can strive to get to that level, but I do not need to be depressed because I'm not there, okay? Whatever that level is, our life journey is a process. We take growth one step at a time. And in that same way, our spiritual journey is a process. One growth step at a time. Our scripture this morning 
comes to us from 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 17, we're going to read verses 8 through 16. 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16. And we read together. Then the word of the Lord came to him, meaning uh, uh, Elijah. There we go, Elijah. And, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a woman was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to, make, to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the, oil, the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Let us pray together. Gracious Father, again, I thank you for this glorious day and your presence with us. I thank you for your message that you have for each and every one of us here this day. Lord, may we hear and understand. May we recognize your message for us. It is as unique as each of us. All the words in the scripture are the same. My words are the same, but your message for each of us is unique, just as unique as you made us. And you know exactly what we need to hear right here today. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you that you are here with us now. And I would just pray that you would take the words of my mouth and that you would take the meditations of all of our hearts and that you would make them acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In this morning's scripture, we find the prophet Elijah, the prophet Elijah being sent to the town of Zarephath. There he would find a woman, a widow, that would take care for him while he was there. As we learned, as he approached the city gates, the widow was gathering sticks to build a fire to cook all the flour she had, a last meal for her and her son. Elijah's instructions to her were, go ahead, go ahead and do what you were going to do, but first make mine. Go ahead and do what you were going to do, but first make mine. Strange request, we might think, right? But it is apparent that this woman has been in contact with God somehow or another, right? I mean, after all, we just saw in verse 9 of our scripture that, that uh, uh, God had told Elijah that I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So she understands to some degree where Elijah is coming from. And when Elijah comes, does arrive, in verse 12 of our scripture, her response is, as surely as the Lord your God lives. She recognized God has been preparing her for this occasion. We see that this widow recognizes the special circumstances that 
she is involved. Now, she may not understand. Why? Because her focus is on herself, her circumstances, right? The rest of verse 12 reads, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home to make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. She was looking at her situation. She was looking at herself. Why am I even here? could have been part of her conversation also. Elijah's response to her negative situation, right out of Elijah, he says, what was it in verse 13? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go on and do just as you said. But first, make me a loaf of bread. Was Elijah that selfish that he was more concerned about his own hunger than that of a widow and her son? Of course not. Of course not. He knew that God had more plans. He knew that God had things to go on beyond this particular event. This widow just had to trust, to put her faith in God and to show it by doing what Elijah had said. The God had, that God that had contacted her before and that God that she recognized as Elijah's God, it was now her turn to believe in that same God. And she did, and she did. How does this Old Testament story then relate to us today? <laughs> Just as Elijah told this widow, basically he said, keep doing what you are doing. Just make God first. Just as Gainel, keep up with what you're doing, being a witness right where God had placed her. And each of us here this morning, God has us right where he wants us. Each of us has a sphere of influence that God has given for us to be his spokesperson, to be his witness. I, I have shared before, but I'll share again. Back in the older days, when, uh, uh, when a, a used car salesman would uh, uh, be on the lot and they would see a person come into the to the uh, car lot there. There was the old saying that one person that comes into a used car lot represents 250 people. That's 250 people that this one person has a direct influence on. And, and they, they broke it down into uh, uh, primary fi family members and then secondary family members. And then all of the friends of each of those uh, primary and secondary family members. And then it even went one more uh, ring around that, that whole area with friends of friends. That one person represented 250 folks. Back in that day, 250 was a good number. Today, it's probably uh, a little conservative, if you will, please, because we have, uh, not only do we have all of our, our personal relationships, but we've got the internet and, and, the, and the web and, and all of those other things that even reach out even further. Oh, sure. We can look around us and see all sorts of ways that we fall short, right? And we just miss the mark too, too many times. But our faith is not in ourselves, right? Just as this widow learned, our faith is in him, in Jesus. And when we keep him first, our spiritual flour and oil will never be depleted. Now, did this widow's flour and oil container fill 
right up to the brim at that point, at that very moment? I don't think so. <laughs> because it's been my experience that God blesses us as we need, as our faith continues to grow. I believe that this widow then demonstrated her faith each and every time she drew from the flour and oil because there was always just enough for just one more meal. Should the sack have filled to the brim? Should she have uh, enough oil that, that filled the canister? We have a tendency, don't we, to relax and maybe take the credit ourselves for the excess. God continued to bless her each time she went to the pantry so that she was reminded that it was a gift from God. Did Gainel ever question again? Yes, she did. Did the widow ever wonder every time she opened that flour sack or looked into that uh, uh, container for oil? I am certain she did. Will we feel the feelings of depression ever again? Probably. But God says through Elijah, don't be afraid. He is with us and he will be there forever and for always. We just have to put things in, perfect, in perspective. Do what we are doing, but make him first. Put him first. Do what we are doing, but first put God number one. Let us pray. Gracious Father, again, I thank you for this time and I thank you for your presence here. I thank you for your message. Bless it, Lord, as we seek to do your will. Thank you, Father, for your love and your grace that goes beyond anything we could ever imagine. And Lord, we come before you now, not only with our hearts and our minds, but with our voices raised in prayer to you as we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.